Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe Live. I'm here in Huntsville, Alabama, and I've got uh, David Heigl, and I've got Dale Gublik, and Jim Adair. Adair. Like, I should have remembered that one. Anyhow, today we got the opportunity to look at the new big three, as far as street sweepers are concerned. So right in back of us, we've got the Avalanche, which is the new M6 hybrid. And then we've got the new Nighthawk, which is also a hybrid, and then the, the, uh, the crowning glory, I guess, 100% electric vehicle right over here. So uh, Dale, um, what I'd like to do is have you and, um, and uh, uh, Jim and, um, and Dale kind of give us a little background on uh, the three vehicles so, so we can basically know what the heck's going on here. Yeah, so these guys are the, the brains behind it. So I'm just gonna tell you why we're here today. For 50 right. years, uh, Schwarz and, uh, has been building hydraulic sweepers. And uh, we're excited now to launch our fully electric and our hybrid electric sweepers. And uh, we didn't want to wait for the market to um, mature on the chassis side and the infrastructure side. So we went ahead and as an OEM, as a sweeper OEM, we went ahead and developed the sweepers as fully electric sweepers. So what you see on the back of these chassis is full electrification of uh, the conveyors and the, the brooms. And we call it pragmatic electrification. That's the way we like to refer to it because we took a pragmatic approach <coughs> to it. Um, by going from hydraulics, we removed, uh, we uh, cut out the efficiency losses of up to 30 to 40%. Noise has almost been eliminated. All, all you hear are the whispers of the uh, of the uh, brooms against the concrete. Uh, normally mm. you hear the whining of a hydraulic engine. You don't hear that anymore, sweeper sweep at night. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, as well as the efficiency. Uh, the efficiency is really high on these. Uh, it results in fuel savings, which we're not ready to report yet. But uh, typically these run with a pony motor or a auxiliary engine that's 74 horsepower, um, 64 kilowatt, these can now run at about 16 kilowatt hours. Cool. Um, so the uh, last thing is the performance. Uh, the performance uh, is really good on these. Uh, the, the torque value is really high. Uh, you can bog down hydraulic brooms. You can clog a hydraulic conveyor. But with the torque we have here, the performance is really high and there's no bogging down and the precision of adjusting the brooms is, is really high. So these guys did a fantastic job. We're really excited as we, we uh, celebrate our 50th anniversary. Uh, like I said, 50 years of hydraulics. We're looking forward to the next 50 years of electrification. And uh, what you see behind us is the uh, hybrid electric. Um, it's simplicity at its best with all the hydraulics gone. Uh, this is another outward. Schwartz is part of the Alamo Group. And uh, Nighthawk is a uh, animal why don't we, group company. Yeah, why don't we walk group. over a little yeah, bit? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Dale has his DNA on this as well. And yeah. uh, uh, Nighthawk Sweepers, uh, based out of Seattle, Washington, is uh, one of our companies at, at Alamo Group. So you saw the, the hybrid. This is also a hybrid. And this is our fully electric sweeper on a fully electric. Freightliner M2 chassis. So, but they're chassis independent, so we can put it on any fully electric chassis. Like I said, we're the OEM builder for the sweeper, independent of the chassis. So, I'll turn it over to these guys to get into the really neat stuff. Well, actually, why don't we start over here? Because this is yours, Jim, right? This one. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't claim it personally, but. Uh... Well. Yeah, you're standing here. <laughs> yeah, I'm standing here. <laughs> you're the rep. Yeah. So, so really, we 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 started with the totally electric. You know, Dell's group and at uh, ATC has really done a great job in, in putting a program together to do the whole electric, uh, with electric chassis, uh, electric rear end, and then we springboard off of that to a, uh, for those users that, that have a little bit of a, a battery anxiety, uh, to go to a hybrid. That way you've got a diesel you can run basically as long as you can you put fuel in it, it's going to run totally electric. And, and uh, as David said, uh, what we did, we did not go with uh, uh, 
the hydraulic back end as we've had in the, in the past. We we went totally electric and uh, and, and using the electric uh, sweeper as the example and uh, uh, did our electric motors on our uh, gutter brooms, on our conveyor, and on our main broom. And the nice thing about the motors are not only the torque and the efficiencies of the motors, we're getting a great closed loop system to it to where we can get that feedback instantly into the cab. Uh, we know the RPMs, we know the temperatures of the motors, uh, we know what torque they are we're at. It's it's a very it's very good for sensing and, and keeping that efficiency of, of the total system. So uh, it, we're really really proud of it. Uh, uh, we've done this one with some Lexan panels just to show some of the workmanship that uh, uh, with the engineers and the design and, and uh, our our guys on the assembly line how they they're putting together the uh, the back end. Now our back end on this, just as it is on the electric, is a 48 volt instead of a high uh, uh, high voltage. To where, uh, if you can work on electric forklift, if you if you remember with yeah, that, you, yeah. you can work on this machine. Cool. Well, that's a good brief. Uh, you're up, Dale. All right. Let's go and uh, Let's talk about this together. one. Yeah, we're so, going to stick close together. <laughs> there you go. So this one was a response to, hey, we need a hybrid. We need uh, the, the hydraulic version uh, was totally dependent on engine speed. And, and when you're at idle, you don't have a lot of power to make sweeping air moving. You need to get a little bit of throttle in there. And a lot of times you had to do a pedal dance. And it's just made an operator just do a whole lot of things to sweep. Also, when you're sweeping a, a curb line, you could run out of oil. If you're you know, getting back down to idle, um, you run out of oil, so either your broom stops, your fan slows down, things just weren't... It took a very skilled pedal dance to keep things going beautifully. So we said, oh, you know what? This is a perfect example of a, a battery electric hybrid would work really well here. We could keep this fan spinning. We could reduce all the power that this is using. And this thing would now kind of sing along at its the power that's available from the batteries. And then the generator just maintains a discharge on the batteries. And that way the, the speed of the engine is somewhat decoupled from the batteries until the batteries get hot, till the batteries get cold, till the batteries get depleted. You've got whatever power is available in that battery. Cool. And the whole system all works together just to make sure that you can keep a constant fan speed, you can keep uh, the constant gutter room speed and keep all your control right where you need it, in the gutter, moving dirt into the hopper. And it just makes it a lot easier. Plus. Yeah. With all of the computers that we have to add and all the software we have to add, you got a lot of extra control and features that you can add to this and, and different modes of operation. You can make this behave like a plug-in hybrid. So you're running your batteries down over the day, or you can run it as a um, more like a freight train where you've got just as much electrical power as you can pull off the engine, supplemented by your battery buffer. Hmm. And uh, you can do heavy sweeping that way. Well, that's that was kind of the idea. Um, <laughs> Actually, uh, I heard that there's quite a bit of um, enthusiasm about this vehicle as well. Right? Yes, uh, this is uh, solved so, because of that pedal dance problem and yeah. all the different kinds of things. Well, that starts to get people excited. Now I can put different people in the cab and they can have a lot easier time driving this thing. Excellent, excellent. So let's go, where did you run off to? Hey, okay. I think you're up again. I could be wrong. Actually, both of you should be talking on this one, yeah. This started actually, oh, probably 10, 11 years ago. Jimmy and I wanted to do this. We, we redesigned this together, this machine, the M6 from the old M6000, and always had our eye on, hey, there's maybe the future to this. But we couldn't quite pull it off. But uh, a few years later, just a, you know, three years ago, uh, all of a sudden a lot of these products became mainstream enough where we could start putting this together and making us a viable product. So we kind of pulled out some of the old ideas and we took measurements. We looked at the, what's going on and on our collective uh, expertise in the field, we said, you know what? We can use wheel motors on here. Yeah, that's really cheap. We can go in different places and we can start asking these different people. Hey, send us your wheel motors and they got to act like this. We kind of knew what we're looking for. Batteries. Oh, we know where we can get some batteries from. Uh, we knew where to get controllers. We had a pile of different controllers and we just kind of systematically went through this system and said, hey, this is the stuff that makes makes sense. What didn't make sense was doing everything electric. So electric scissor lift 
the big hydraulic cylinders, it's really hard to get a good electric cylinder. So we looked at this and you look at the, how much energy is actually used over a whole day and it's not actually that much. So if you lose a little bit of energy, pumping some oil back and forth, no problem. Right, and you're using an electric mo motor to, uh, to, right. to, to, drive the, uh, to drive the hydraulics. Exactly, and yeah. localized pumps. And yeah. so you have actually minimized losses because it turns out while we were doing our research, we found out that one of the big losses is lines, fittings, valve yeah. bodies, yeah. just all the stuff you just kind of look over, but you lose a lot of energy. Well, there's more than that. Um, huh, hydraulic Certainly. lines leak and your friends over at the EPA don't like that. So these are, these are corrections that everybody sooner or later is going to have to uh, uh, accommodate. So do, yeah. doing it before you get a yeah. regulation is always a good idea. Absolutely, and we use a fraction of the amount of oil that we would normally use yeah. on a hydraulic sweeper. And that fraction of oil is a biodegradable. So it's a marine grade, oh. biodegradable yeah. uh, hydraulic Perfect. oil. Perfect, so if it so. does drip, it don't matter. <laughs> you wash yeah. it off. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. Well, cool. So this is gonna be kind of exciting. I'm really excited about seeing anything that moves us just off of, oh, we got an electric car. I really wanna see more of the good stuff that's out there that can basically help out, not just uh, getting from point A to point B, but cleaning up, and, and this, these certainly are cleaning up, I must say.